So we all know who won the 2021 King of the Streets, and we all know now who the champion is when it comes to manufacturers, and that is Macklin. Let's talk about the DRK ESC and the motor right now on the channel. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Dorky and 40 channel. I am Chad, very excited. DRK and the DRK four and a half turn motor. There's a cat behind me, just ignore her, a little crazy. Awesome, I believe I heard that uh, astonishing that like 14, maybe out of the top 20 people were running Macklin systems built into their cars. So we're gonna show you mine, how I got it installed. We'll go over kind of like a little unboxing. More importantly, we're gonna talk about how I'm gonna be able to tune it from the field, how you'll be able to, different options for that, all kinds of cool stuff. So we'll take a look at it here. One other amazing thing is I just got my Drive RC Super Body in the mail today. Ironically, ProLine debuted a Supra body at King of the Streets as well. So I must not be the only one who is tired of 60s muscle cars. No offense to you that love them. They're all awesome. I've also showed you in a couple previous videos that we've got lots of different parts still to build up on my DR10 build itself. Winter is breaking, warm temperatures. We should be able to make some test hits really soon. I uh, just also received my uh, new Reefs uh, servo. You know, you don't need a real powerful servo for any car really, but this one fits the DR10 really nicely because of its small profile. More on that in videos to come. So here we go guys. Here are the boxes of course for the DRK. ESC and motor. So I went with a four and a half turn motor. You know, you can always take something out of the four and a half turn, which is pretty much where I'm at. I know I'm not ready for a three and a half turn motor. So that worked out very well for me. Got in on them while they were in stock. Everything, of course, we know is just going like hotcakes. Luckily, I got my stuff before the king of the streets, so I don't have to fight with everybody else on back orders and everything else like that. So with the ESC, you're gonna get your usual stuff. You're gonna get some stickers and some manuals and everything like that. Um, also, you're gonna get a couple of USB wires. That's actually the motor box. Doesn't come with anything except for stickers. Um, and really, that's about it. Nothing to speak of. Interesting thing to note is that neither one of these actually comes with a sensor wire. And I don't think I've seen an actual Macklin kit so I had to basically steal the sensor wire from my hobby wing setup so that way I could hook the two together and run a full brushless uh, sensored system. Uh, it fit perfectly. Uh, by the way, the hobby wing stuff, I'll keep to the side. I know that everybody is gonna be jumping on board with like the software development that Macklin is doing. Um, it's kind of the way that I thought the stuff should work anyway. I'm not saying I'm no uh, Tim Smith or anybody like that. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. If you want to get a quick refresher on how the Hobby Wing stuff works and just maybe timing and my thought process in general, I'll put a link to the video, you know, up here. You can click, uh, click on that and take a look at it. And then I'll also put a link to my full no prep playlist, which will just give you guys an info of my journey that started last year um, all the way through to whoever's watching this in the future. So let's take a look at my DR10 right here, and you'll be able to see that eh, it's pretty uh, pretty messy right now. So here's what we got going on. This is the wire that I got uh, to hook up to the tablet. And the whole reason why we're doing that is because you cannot get their wireless link right now to save your life. Um, it's a different connection and everything than the Hobby Wing, so can't use it. So got the ESC mounted here in the back. It does come with a fan if you want to use that. Most people don't, 
This ESC is really uh, chunky. It's a lot heavier than my Hobby Wing is, uh, which is uh, kind of, of amazing. Nice thick gauge wires and everything. Uh, you don't get any kind of plugs or anything. So if you want to get stuff soldered, um, you know, I use the Direct Connect uh, solder plugs like this uh, to go into the battery. If you're using XT90s or whatever, you're all good. Uh, comes with a pre-soldered cat pack. That's all good. Uh, little wires, I got the power button over here. So got that receiver wire. And then there's also going to be another connector here for, um, I believe it's the actual module itself. Yeah, because it doesn't plug into the micro USB. And all of them are labeled on there. Can't really read what it says, but anyway, you don't need to worry about it right now. Quick look at the four and a half turn motor set in there. Seems like it's built really nice. It says it's torque tuned for drag racing performance. Uh, again, you know, when you uh, can't discount the record as far as what just happened at King of the Streets, did it have to do with the motor? Did it have to do with the ESC? Who really knows? But the combination together, I always like to try to keep my manufacturers like together. I don't like to blend stuff from different manufacturers, even though this ESC should work with any motor that you have out there. The most important thing is that you want to make sure that it is set at timing to 20 degrees. The Mackle motors come preset to 20 degrees of timing and there's warnings all over the information on the website, in the instruction booklets and everything. Do not change that unless you really know what you're doing. The software is written to work with 20 degrees on the can. All right, so let's fire this thing up and talk about this. The very first thing you want to make sure that you do there is a very specific program when it comes to getting your radio bound and running with this. And one thing that you're going to want to make sure that you do is that you start off with a fresh, clean model. You don't want any crazy thing going on with your throttle inputs or anything like that. There is a definite different series of starting tones. Tim Smith has a video on his Facebook page for go ahead to calibrate it. One important thing though, is that if you flash your firmware, before you do that, you wanna make sure you either hook up to the PC or to a tablet or whatever, and you wanna make sure that you turn reverse power on. Uh, for some reason, the profile has reverse power set to zero, so I never thought I was calibrating my RC correctly in the ESC, even though I was the whole time. I just didn't go through the pages and see that actually my firmware was set to zero up for reverse. So pointer tip there so we'll go ahead here and turn it on and radios on we'll fire up the ESC startup tone couple lights everything like that no big deal just to show you I got uh, forward and reverse going so there's forward there's reverse now I already have the tune put into this now I want you to listen to this very closely this is the key of the Macklin system. It's all about controlling the hit over time. The, the way that they're doing this, it's kind of like a throttle curve, but you're still in a linear format. If you want a little bit more explanation, I definitely recommend checking out that Hobby Wing video that I did that can kind of go into a little bit more deep dive. But you know, when you pull your throttle, of course, you know, you've got a linear curve that goes up. With Hobby Wing, they have a couple settings that you can adjust punch control to kind of like lower the hit at the beginning and then you can basically build a throttle curve so as you pull the trigger it will not apply as much throttle and just kind of like slow your start the problem is is that your trigger pull isn't the same every time and that's where the drk comes in because what it does is it actually does translate that into time so no matter if you pull your trigger slow, fast, whatever, it is going to bring on the multiple stages and apply um, different amounts of throttle throughout those stages at a predetermined set of time. We'll show you that here in the firmware where it'll make a little bit more sense. But I want you to listen to this real quick. So I got the microphone going right here. I'm gonna pull the trigger and what you're gonna hear is a I'm gonna sing for you. Do, 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 do. You're gonna hear the motor increase in stages and I'm just gonna pull the trigger all the way to 100% throttle. So listen. 
So there's only three stages in there right now because I haven't got the fifth stage uh, firmware uploaded. But you heard it go da da da, and that's basically more throttle being put into there. I don't have boost or uh, or turbo, whichever. What we'll the look? I can't remember. Turned on. I turned that all off right now, just for playing here on the bench. So we're literally just dealing with the hit. So take a listen again. Hear that? So we know that definitely works and that's definitely what we want or we wouldn't have saw the results that we saw at Vegas out of the, this stuff. I mean, it literally performed perfectly and was like the best showcase to show that people, what people could do and how important it is to, you know, bring that, don't, you know, just don't bring all that power on at once. There was so much misinformation out there last year about this stuff. I worked so hard thinking that I had to go 100% throttle right off the bat, trying to like put curves and expo into the radio and everything, and it was never consistent. This is the only way to consistently get the best start every single time in the Macklin software. So now let's hook up and take a look at the software. So if you go to Macklin's website on uh, the Facebook group actually, you'll see a post from Colin. If you have a wireless link, you're good. If you don't mind using a laptop uh, at the field uh, or track, you're good too. The PC version is definitely a way more basic looking than this. This is just like awesome and fun the way it works. And you know, it's definitely the way you want. So we'll open up the app here, take a look at it. So there's the app. It's running on a Fire Tablet 7. If you got an Android phone or tablet, you're all good already. You don't have to go through all this. But since I'm an uh, iPad and a Mac user, uh, iPhone, I had to. So he's got all the instructions on how to get this thing for 40 bucks hooked up to the Google Play Store. You can also search uh, Gizmodo on how to put Google Play on a Fire tablet. And then you can get all that done and then download the Mac one app. And then what you're gonna need, it comes with a regular USB wire. And then the other thing you're gonna need is like an OTG adapter, which is like a USB to a micro. Not one that just does the charging, but one that will read data. And this one is from my girlfriend's uh, old uh, Samsung. And one thing you wanna make sure you do is that this is the end that goes into the tablet, not this end. So that like really threw me for a loop for a while and I couldn't get it to connect. And I actually had to email Colin and ask him what the heck I was doing wrong. So, ESC is powered on, radio is off, app is running, and I'm just gonna connect up to the tablet here. And you can see Smart Link, probably not because of the glare, but allow Smart Link to access Macklin DRK160. Okay, boom. So now we are totally hooked up to the app and everything like that. We can go through all of our different settings. We can fetch firmwares. We can flash firmwares. There's a firmware button right down here to do the update. And you can see that I am actually running uh, 15.01, which was the one that they released right before Vegas. So we've got that going on already. Your data logging is there. The manual will take you to the Macklin website. And now we get into programming and this is where all of the magic happens. So you get multiple tunes built into this already. Right now I have the 4.5 low traction tune. So if you take a look right there, you can see all of the different tunes that are built into it. There's a four and a half turn high traction, three and a half turn stuff, there's Blinky, and then there's Drag Race 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Those are all just different things that you can work on yourself. So you go to general settings. This is where you set up your run mode, which we're in drag unlimited. You can set up your Beck voltage, your forward power, reverse power. That's where you want to actually set that up so you don't get tricked out like I did. You wanna make sure that you have that set up at least to something, it's at 40%. I had mine at zero and that's why I wasn't getting any actual reverse after doing multiple calibrations. So then we have the censored mode. 
we're of course at full censored motor rotation normal so that's all good on that protection settings these are just your different voltages and temperature cutouts don't need to really show you that throttle settings you got a throttle punch and a dead band so if you need to do a little bit more custom tuning with throttle punch you can do that i kind of try to like leave my stuff the same um you know we'll see what it does whenever i get out there it can actually start uh, working on stuff so there's brake settings in here um so your strength and drag brake which of course we don't want drag brake and you can adjust your braking strength based on what you want. So here is the key. This is the clutch reason right here. Launch power control. So when you click on launch power control, actually I do have uh, five stages hooked up here. I did, you just couldn't hear them all. So basically how this works, like I said, you've got five stages and each stage you can define how much power is being applied from the throttle in the ESC and in what time period. So if you take a look at the low traction, it's starting first stage 45%. Then in 0.3 seconds, it's going to move to the second stage and raise the throttle to 60. Then in the third stage, three more 0.2 seconds later, 75%. 1 second slater 90% and then the fifth stage of course is 100% power. Now if you don't want that many stages, you can cut those down and you can just move stages 4, 3, whatever to 100%. So, but I think you definitely want to try to maximize your benefit and use as much of that as possible. Maybe all right, skipping with that fifth stage. We'll see what happens. I can't wait to get outside and test this. This is what it's all about. And then when you get into advanced timing uh, settings, this is where you have your turbo position, your top speed turbo, which is your degrees that you put in, your slew rate, which is how fast it will apply it over, how many degrees per second. And then you have your actual turbo delay, which is if you want to delay it, how far down the track do you want it to start? So if you've got like one of the GPSs and you start timing yourself and you're doing you know, 2.5, three second passes, you know, that's where you're gonna start adjusting all this stuff in and figuring out how much time you need to get to 100% with the stages, and then how much time do you want to let pass before you kick in the turbo. Uh, most people will probably kick in the turbo as soon as they hit 100%. I don't really think that's the best way to do it. You're, you know, but if your car can take it, just pour it on, let it, let it, let it rip. Um, I think he had 30 degrees dialed in here. So basically we're looking at 50 degrees of timing. So 20 in the can and 30 here. I remember seeing tunes last year where people were talking about throwing in at 60 to 70 degrees of added timing just after the can. So 100, 120 degrees of timing. And we wonder why people were blowing up ESCs like crazy. Speaking of that, I haven't heard of anybody that's blown one of these apart yet. So that's really good news. So that's it, your nice little compact thing. I can't wait to get the little wireless module. That will be super so I could do everything but from my phone, or maybe not, since it's nice to have the bigger screen here so you can actually look at the data logs. So data logging, you can see all the different logs that I have here. Um, if I take a look at it, it just shows my little hits that I've done where uh, it's given me like RPMs, voltage, the temperature of the ESC, and the temperature of the motor because we're running a censored system. So take a look at that right there. Oh, the glare, geez. Real nice chart and everything that it's giving you. So that's gonna be just great to have all that stuff right at the fingertips out there on the track. Man, I can't wait for it to get warm. It's gonna be fantastic. Guys, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this and were able to learn a few things. Hit me up with any questions. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to have a lot more coming on this baby in the future. Peace.